Color correction is quite easy. You know what is right, but what about color grading? Where do we start? What to do next? And which direction to take it? Today, we're going to explore a special effects color grading tool active since 1995 and see if it can actually make our photos pop even 30 years later. Yes, we're getting older. Check this out. I'm just going to open the plugin from inside of Photoshop and say you wanted to add a soft glow for sunlight. Just click on classical soft focus and done. Look at how brilliant this looks. Before, after. Looks like the graphics from Need for Speed Most Wanted. You can of course increase or decrease the intensity. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Now say you wanted to add some kind of color grading or cross processing on top of that. Just simply click on the plus right next to it. Done. And you can choose several styles here. I'm just going to go pick this one. Possibly this looks amazing. Here's the before. Here's the after, just by doing just a little bit. Another example with motion this time, this is a different one. Click on open. You can actually start directly with a preset and it gives you preview of all of these presets. I'm gonna go with this one with motion. Click on it and already this looks so good. You can of course modify all of the aspects of it. Let's scroll up and we're gonna increase the saturation a bit and also contrast a lot more. And you can of course move this double exposure thing. Let's scroll down, come to double exposure, click on it and there you go. You can move it wherever you want. And of course, you can change the light leak to something more exciting. Let's scroll down. Here's the light leaks section. Not just that, you can even move it the way you want. So let's say we were to go to dynamic and pick something like this. Already looks fantastic. If you hover over, you'll see this. And through this, you can move it and position it the way you want. Change the strength everything in your control. And the best part is you can start with me right now for free and follow along absolutely for free. I'll leave a link in the description for the absolute free full functioning trial. You have 30 days to try it as much as you want. Save it, everything. There is no limit to it. There are a variety of effects and more than 50 plus filters inside. I cannot wait to explore them with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and let's start with something simple. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the background layer and then select any of these three tools and click on Select Subject. We are trying to create a subject mask here. With the selection active, click on the Mask button. Now, once you install the Nick Collection plugins, you'll find it inside of the Plugins menu, Nick Collection 8. I'm just going to open Viveza. If you have it already open, just open it from your panels and click on Open. Now, you can select all. This will include all the masks inside of the plugin. Let me share with you how to give this photo the details and the color of a Renaissance painting. Scroll down. First of all, let's set the white balance. So let's check it. I'm going to click on this eyedropper and click on an area that should have been gray in real life. There you go. Already, we are very close. Now, let's make it more warmer by increasing the temperature. Let's set it to about 20. But as you can see, the highlights are too much. Let's decrease that. This looks perfectly fine. The shadows are too faded, so let's decrease that too here. And to add more details, let's simply increase the structure at the top. Perfect. Oh my gosh, looks fantastic, doesn't it? Now the dark areas of the background has gotten too dark. So how do we control that? Masks. Click on this button to call the masks from Photoshop, the one that we created. And here we have the Photoshop layer one mask for the subject. If you wanted to see it, let's click on this button to see the mask. Right now it is affecting the subject because subject is white, but we want to target the background. How do we do that? Invert the mask by clicking on this button. Let's click on this button again to take away the preview. Scroll down and you have the controls for the mask. Let's make the blacks brighter by taking it to the right, but we also need to separate the background from the subject. So let's decrease the brightness overall. And to enhance the dynamic range, let's take the rightmost point inside of the curves and take it to the left. We don't want to lose any details, so this looks perfectly fine. Now, I always recommend applying any filter as a smart object and you can easily do that inside of Nick by clicking on this button and choosing smart object. And just so that every time smart object is picked, you can change that in the preferences. Let's go to preferences and we want to make sure that it's always set to smart object unless we choose otherwise. Let's close it. And now when you click on apply, it will be applied. It should be applied as a smart object. There you go. You can always change it by the way. Here's the overall before and here is the after. Crazy difference. And you can, of course, anytime go back to all of those settings by double clicking right here. Nick Viveza is going to show up with all of these settings absolutely intact. And how many sliders did we move? Maybe three, four? Less than that. Looks good. You've already seen how good these are. Rarely does a brand have so much confidence in their product that they give 30 days absolutely for free 
no limits without charging you anything. I highly recommend that you play with it during that time all you want. And in that process, if you fall in love with it, if you feel like it's adding an extra edge to your image, just check the link in description or use this code to get an additional discount. This code is valid for enough days, so you have plenty of time to test it for free, experiment and decide for yourself. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Before we go ahead and unlock more magic about Nick Collection, let us understand two ways to apply the plugins. Just like the previous example, here I have the original photo on top of that another layer copy with the mask of the car. Now let's say you wanted to apply the analog effects. You can either go to filter Nick Collection 8 analog effects. That's one way of doing that. But there's a problem with this. It does not bring in the mask. But still, if you wanted to apply it as a filter, you can do it, but I don't recommend it. Here is why. If we were to add any filter, for instance, photo plate, let's add it. If we go to the masking section, we don't have the option to bring in the masks from Photoshop. As you can see, we already have a mask here. So if we go through a panel, that is through plugins, Nick Collection 8, and I'm gonna open the same one. Here we already have the panel stuck in. Let's click on open. It will give you a prompt where you can include all of the masks. And right now, let's say we go with this preset. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. Let's go with this one and say you wanted to add some dirt and scratches. Let's go to eroded, so many options here, this one. Now say for some reason you don't want the dirt and scratches on the car. Of course we don't want that in real life as well. So let's click on this button. This new button will show up that allows you to bring in the masks from Photoshop. And I'm gonna select this mask. And from here you can control the texture strength. We don't want any of the dirt and scratches on the car, so let's take it all the way to zero, and it's gone from there. Now it is time for us to explore one of the most powerful Nick Collection plugins with a ton of filters, and that is the color effects. I'm gonna directly open it from here. We already covered this example. All you need to understand are filters and stacking. That's it. So on your left, you have a ton of filters. Of course, you have presets too, but right now, let us focus on filters. You can scroll through and try a variety of them. Let's say you wanted to try this one, Glamour Glow. And then the controls for that particular filter shows up on the right hand side. Let's say I wanna increase the glow, increase or decrease the saturation, up to you. But now let's say you're not liking this filter and you wanna try something else. So if you click on something else, not the plus button, if you click on something else, that filter changes to that. Again, if you click on something else, that filter changes to that. It doesn't stack. Now let's talk about stacking. Just as we work with layers in Photoshop, inside of Nick Color Effects, you can stack multiple filters, even one filter many times. For instance, I'm gonna select the classic soft focus here. This looks fantastic to me. Let's increase the strength quite a bit. And on top of that, let's say you wanna stack cross-processing like we did before click on the plus button instead of the filter here. Once you do, it's added on top of that. And then you can make changes to it, pick whatever you like. Let's say I like this one. I'm gonna decrease the strength. There you go. Now that we understand how color effects works, let's shift gears and create some magic. Let's see how far we can take it. With the background layer selected again, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. And with any of these three tools selected, click on Select Subject. Again, we are trying to create a mask here. With the selection active, simply click on the Mask button. Now let's apply Color Effects. You can activate this from the panels and click on Open. Let's select all the masks so that they are included inside of the plugin. This time we are going to start directly with the preset. Let's open that up and you can click on any preset, see how they look like and you can change these presets. Let's scroll down. By the way, this looks fantastic but I'm gonna go with something else. Even on a cloudy day? Now we can modify this, don't worry about that. So here is the sunlight filter added on it. Here's the before, here's the after. Let's say you want that bluishness more in the background, less on the subject. Here comes the mask. Let's click on this button. Let's bring in this mask. And now if you play with the opacity right here, it is controlling the background. And let's set it to how it was. I think it was 72. However, if you scroll down and play with the opacity here, it changes the opacity of the filter on the subject. So I'm gonna keep it less, maybe around 28 fits perfectly. Now this, my friend, is an art. You should go how you feel like. I feel that there should be a little bit of warmth here. So let's see if we have a filter for that. If we were to search warmth, yes, there is brilliance and warmth. The more you use it, the more familiar you get with all of these filters. Click on plus. Let's increase the warmth here 
already looking so good. This is good. Perceptual saturation. We don't want it to be too much. This is okay. And from there, you can just keep on trying different ones. So let's add something else. Bleach bypass is not nice. Let's scroll down. Let's try this one called duplex. But this feels like it's too much. So let's decrease the overall opacity like so. Maybe 64 is good. On top of that, to make it more soft, why not we add one of our favorites, classic soft focus. Click on plus and look at the glow. Now you and I agree it's too much. So let's decrease the strength here. And also we don't want so much glow on the subject. So again, click on this button to add that mask. I'm going to click on this mask, but it takes it away from the background. So let's increase the opacity back again for the background. And here we have the opacity for the subject. Let's decrease it to about 50%. Now, if you want more glow and make a glow soup, why not find a glow filter here? There is glamour glow. Let's add it. Click on the plus. See, it's getting softer and softer. You can, of course, control the amount here. I don't want that much. Maybe this is fine. Now let's add some more warmth and structure. And how do we do that? With Viveza controls inside of color effects. So if we were to search for Viveza, yes, we will find global adjustments. Let's click on the plus here. Let's add a bit of structure by increasing this and warmth, a lot of it. You can just keep adding these filters. There are no limitations to it. So I'm going to try something else here called polarization. Let's add that. Now it doesn't seem like it does much, but if we were to increase the strength, see the pop it adds, but we want to keep it mild. So let's increase the shadows. So it's not much affected there and the highlights as well. So overall, here's the before, here's the after, just that little bit of pop. And now you can decrease the strength accordingly. So I'm going to set it to about maybe 128. This works. And on top of that, why don't we try duplex again? Click on plus. No, that would be too much. Let's decrease the opacity. Maybe have a slight touch of it. Opacity about 12. If you wanted the subject to be a bit more brighter, we can add a simple levels here. So right here in the search, search for levels. I think inside of filters, there is levels and curves. Click on the plus. And you can take the rightmost point to the left like so. Brilliant. If you wanted to limit it just to the subject, click on this button. We already have the mask, click on that. And now it's limited just to the subject. And now you can play with these curves, do whatever you want, just as you did inside of Photoshop and hit apply. Just those little changes make such a big difference. I added just a few more filters. I'm going to share the file with you that you can download. And here's the overall before and here is the after. Now you can easily switch from one plugin to another from inside of the plugin, making the experience absolutely seamless. With the Nick color effects, let's click on open. First of all, let us apply some film grain. Let's go to film grain modern branded. And there are many presets you can choose from, but I'm going to go with the default one. And this is making it too bright. So let's make it slightly darker and more contrasty. Fantastic. Now let's add some global adjustments. Let's search for it. There you go. Click on plus. And I really like adding some warmth here. Makes the food a bit more tasty. Now from here, let's say you wanted to add some effects inside of analog effects. So you can directly go there by clicking on this dropdown and go to analog effects. It applies that as a smart object, does everything in the background. And now you have it open in analog effects. Let's add some filters here. Let's go to filters. And I really want to add some bokeh. Click on plus. Let's make this larger according to the food. And you can, of course, control the blur strength. Not too much. Maybe around 40 is good. Now, let's say you wanted some dirt and scratches. Click on the plus there. I'm going to go to eroded. This is really good. I, I really love the texture that it adds. This one as well. But the textures will pop up if we add some vignetting on top. So here we have lens vignette. Click on plus there. And we can control the size. Oh my gosh, already making it look so good. So this is good. Size is good. Now we can choose the dirt and scratches. Anything that we like, this one is okay. You can control the strength of it. This is good. Just those little changes make the image so much more exciting than before. Click on apply. And as you can see, both those plugins are applied. Here's the before, very bland. Here's the after, delicious. Now, as we transition into analog effects, there are so many filters and overlays and effects that we can apply. We already covered several of them, like dirt and scratches, double exposure. Let's go a bit deeper. This time, let's do something simple. Let's go to presets, scroll down, and let's go with something fun. I like this. And you can actually control the blur. Let's go to the bokeh section. There it is. Click on it to activate it, and you can move it around. I'm going to keep it this way. 
you can expand it so that all of that area is blurred out. This already looks like a fantastic music album cover. Let's see what other filters have been added. There is photo plate. Let's try corroded. This looks pretty good. And let's go with this one. Oh my gosh, already this looks incredible. And there you have it, a brand new look for this image. A lot of people will say, hey, AI can do this, AI can do that. But once you zoom in, you begin to realize the difference between AI platforms and plugins and effects and professional tools where every detail is clearly laid out and you can actually pixel peep. Now let's do a final work with analog effects and this time we're going to create a piece of art. You can start with the preset if you want but I really want to start from scratch. Let's go to filters. If you're not seeing that, you need to make sure all nick is activated and inside of that let's add some light leaks. Click on plus to add it and there are many light leaks that you can apply. Some really nice strengths here. Let's go to dynamic and let's add some rays something like that, or maybe something like this. I'm going to decrease the strength to about 50. And the best part is if you hover over, you can of course move this around. This is good. Now let's add some bokeh. There it is. So I'm going to add it right here. Make it narrow like so. Looks good. Keep in mind, you can always rotate these things. If you hover over here, you can rotate it just slightly. And let's increase the blur strength to about 50. Let's give this a film look. Let's click on film type, add it. You can choose warm, cool, subtle, up to you. I'm going to keep it warm. Let's try this one already looking fantastic. Let's add some grain. Let's increase the grain size by decreasing this slider, grain per pixel. This is way too much. So let's keep it around 296. Now to add more texture, you can also add dirt and scratches. You have it here. Let's click on plus. There are many categories here. Let's go to organic. I like that category. Let's go with Sixth one looks really good. Now I do not want this so much on the face. So while you can create a mask in Photoshop, you can also create a mask here and we need a soft mask anyway. Let's click on this button. This will allow us to drag in a mask like this and this will keep it away from the areas. Now we don't want any texture there. So let's decrease the texture strength. So no texture in that particular area. I really like this. Now finally to add more punch, we can add some levels and curves. There it is. Let's add that and we're just going to bring it down slightly from here. There you go. This looks good. And we can increase the dynamic range from here. Once you're happy, hit apply. If you feel like you need to add a bit more saturation, let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Increase the saturation slightly to about 12 before. Very plain. It's nice after. This is like a piece of art. This video will easily turn 10 hours if we were to cover every single aspect of every Nick plugin. The possibilities are truly limitless. You have the Nick Sharpener which does a fantastic job in extracting every little detail. Then you have the Silver FX which is incredible for black and white conversion and just so much more. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed exploring Nick. You can download it for free, try it, experiment it for 30 days and if you're interested you can use this coupon code to get additional discount but I would love for you to just try it. They have been the game for 30 years and I remember creating a video about it eight years ago when I was starting out with Pix Imperfect. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?